With the age of Renaissance reformation and voyages there was another important development a major transition in Europe and that was industrial revolution now what was so classic about this industrial revolution the sole idea was to produce more and more goods but how the cost should be very very low and if the cost is low what can be done the profits can be even higher so with this industrial revolution the idea of capitalism got a thrust because the people the owners the investors were now able to produce huge amount of goods at a significantly lower cost and therefore had huge profit margins and this capitalism paved the way for further industrial revolution so industrial revolution is attributed to england and it is believed that in 1750s the industrial revolution started so in 1750 when the industrial revolution started we also call this age as a machine age it is not the case that before 1750 there were no no basic machines that were into existence definitely yes before 1750s we saw the use of plow we saw the use of air pump we saw the use of printing press as well all these were discovered before the industrial revolutions however with the industrial revolution coming in faster ways of development started to come in steam power was discovered steam engines were discovered power looms came into existence and moreover it was not just the mechanical changes that happened in the life it was more of the way of thinking that changed the idea the mentality that changed so this machine age was a time when all the human power moved from a human to a machine power and therefore it is known as a machine age so rather than using man rather than using animals as a source of power source of work machines started to replace them and since one machine could replace many people or many animals there was a significant change in the way the life revolved or uh, the life evolved or the changes in the industrial revolution took place so the most important thing the development how these industries started to came in we saw initially the guild systems guild systems was a system where people with common interests used to stay together and this guild system was replaced by domestic system domestic system implied use of simple machines in the household and production in the household the swaraj system of charkha as we can say is an example of domestic system but this system became obsolete now this domestic system was replaced by a factory floor so factory system came into existence and this factory system was further interesting because this factory system was managed by the capitalist the simple machines the simple tools the simple animal power human power which could be used in homes was replaced by machines now as it was replaced by machine people were replaced by machine so there were huge factories coming into existence for those factory floors Ma manual labor was required but that labor was badly placed in worse condition and the livelihood the socio economic status of the people was not good they were kept uh, kept in shanty areas with the poor sanitation poor infrastructure poor healthcare facilities and everything the early forms we can say of the capitalist society was seen through the industrial revolution the everything that came into existence here need to be transformed but there was a reason why this industrial revolution started first in england can you wonder why there were many countries across the world but still this small nation of england was the region which dominated the world when it came to industrial revolution so it started with this region of england as you can see in this world map and this small region was able to rule the complete world and bring changes and supply material supply finished products to this region so there are seven reasons
reasons which have been cited why industrial revolution first started in england the first reason we can see is the trade now what kind of trade when factories came into existence in england there was slave trade now again factories were running on machines so a lot of production could be done in small time a lot of profit margins could be generated because the cost was relatively less a same bed sheet which used to be prepared by hand could take around 10 days 15 days by one uh, artisan was replaced by nearly 10 to 15 bed sheets in a day by the basic machines that started so there was lower cost more profit margins for the capitalist and therefore england turned out to be an unraveled power with most of the inventions lying within the territory of england during that time now inventions that started in england are again very very interesting we would understand those in a while the next is now when there is so much production you need to supply it there should be someone who would buy that so Britishers started to establish colonies and these were the centers where people would buy their products. Not only buy their products but also if you have machines which can produce so much you require a constant raw material. Where would you get the raw material? So the minerals, cottons for all this you cotton all this you required the sources of raw material. So Asia and Africa were indeed the best sources of raw material and the major colonies of uh, the uh, Europe or the England during that time. The next important thing was enclosure movement. What was the enclosure movement? As the name suggests, enclosure movement was an interesting movement where initially people used to have small land holdings under the enclosure movement, all these small land holdings was consolidated into large land holdings. Now, large farm was easily maintained, but what happened? The owners, the peasants who used to work in the small farms lost their jobs. They became landless. They became unemployed. So, these people moved to the factories, moved to the cities of England where the industrial revolution was growing. And because the people moved here, there was no shortage of labor. The factories were witnessing extensive and huge amount of labor. Now these factories at that time required cheap labor that could live near to the factory floor in the unhealthy conditions and still work for the production. So this enclosure movement gave way for huge amount of peasants and laborers to move to industries in the cities of England. And the next important was during this time the serfdom disappeared. That means the people were not tied to their lands anymore and they were not tied to their lands so they were free to go for any other job. They were free to pick their another job. Besides this, another important thing was good transport. Now, when there is huge production taking place, you need to supply that to different parts of the world, to the colonies. So, shipping should be developed. Good shipping was available through the routes of England. Also, England was one of the regions which was bestowed was with abundant natural resources. Huge amount of water supply, huge amount of iron and coal required for the basic industries. Also, there was a stable government. That means there was no interference of the government, no domination of the feudal class and was a perfect destination for the rising atmosphere for industrial revolution. And this are some of the major reasons why England flourished as the region or the center of industrial revolution and no other country could overtake England till very very late period. Also the other nations did not have these advantages. Some of the nations would neither not have the natural resources, would not have the abundant iron and coal or would lack capital, would lack labor and all these things or a stable government and all these things were fulfilled by England and therefore England was the reason 
the region where the industrial revolution started and the reasons we have quoted for the growth of industrial revolution now whenever a revolution takes place it's not that simple it is tied with numerous inventions the first thing was the idea with cotton manufacturing of textile so numerous inventions tied to cotton the first was the idea to have finer and cheaper thread how can we produce more fine and cheaper thread the first thing that was discovered was a spinning jenny now spinning jenny was discovered by james hargivis and a spin yarn on eight spindles at a time so it could spin yarn on eight spindles at a given point of time but this was adopted by a machine which used running water and could smoothen and fasten the process this machine was developed by arkwright arkwright used rollers in order to move make this much more smoother and faster however later crompton brought in a combination of the spinning jenny produced by hargivis and the idea of running water by arkwright and produced a new machine which was known as mule now this mule was much more faster in the speed and produced fine yarn and fabric john k also during this time invented flying shuttle which could increase the speed of weaving so these were the developments which were related to the spinning now came the power loom cart cart right invented power loom his idea was that a horse power bullock power should be replaced by water power and steam power so he merged the concept of steam power and water power and created power looms and these power looms were capable of producing more and more the next important thing was how to separate cotton from the seeds this was a tremendous job despite of the fact that a lot of cotton was produced and a lot of cotton could create the cloth what was required was the cotton gin machine or the ginning machine this cotton ginning machine was developed by ili witney ili witney what he initially did was separated the cotton and seeds and as a result this machine with this machine the cotton and seeds could be separated 300 times faster then the original way of separating that so the production started tremendously since it was 300 times faster the way the cotton was separated from the seeds in 1760 it is believed that england imported 2 million kgs of cotton however in 1815 it imported 50 million kgs of cotton and in 1840 it imported nearly 250 million kilograms of cotton so there was a steep rise in the import of cotton the only reason was the cotton ginning machine a very simple a very basic machine but it could make the task much more faster much more smoother also for weaving uh, robert uh, roberts richard roberts discovered the weaving machine uh, and elias hopes started with the sewing machine so once we have the cloth there is the uh, the weaving which is done for the cloth and then stitching or sewing which is done is again important the next important invention was the invention of steam engine initially newcomb in 1712 gave the steam engine however in 1769 james watt gave the steam engine these steam engines replaced the human power the animal power the bullock power the horse power and revolutionized the way the production could take place now since with the steam engine the production was jumping what was the next thing that was required the next thing was required was more machines so for more machines with more steam power you need to have more machines for more machines what was the next thing that was required was blast furnace now blast furnace could uh, use the low grade iron and convert it into steel the process got very very cheaper over time and with this blast furnace numerous industries started to develop further so it was a systematic way 
from where we say initially it was the textile which developed later with the steam engine blast furnace came in and infrastructure became the basis now whatever was produced need to be marketed need to be sold so transportation became the next important thing so george stevenson uh, started a steam engine and that was to take the coal from the mines to the port and this was through the railway line however in 1830 the first railway was used to carry both the passenger and the freight from liverpool to manchester and this was the first development in the transport system later on roads improved canals were dug and through the idea of macadam macadamized roads or what we call as pakka roads now were developed and these pakka roads further led to a idea of strengthening infrastructure more production more expansion of facilities and transportation which could be available to the periphery connection of rivers streams lakes and canals was made much more simpler the next was how industrial revolution impacted the life as we mentioned industrial revolution brought a massive change in the lifestyle by mass production the production jumped significantly there was a lot of surplus production and this surplus production could be sold only to the colonies because uh, england itself could not accommodate so much production so if you want to sell it outside you need to acquire colonies for acquiring colonies you need to discover new lands so age of exploration age of discovery was very very important unless and until new areas were discovered new lands were discovered where will you sell so much production that is taking place the next was trade now as the trade developed with the railway line the development of railway line with the digging of canals with the uh, ship development all this saw new towns coming up new cities coming up and the population that resided in the rural areas started to move towards the towns the nations came closer to one another and also we saw that there was concentration of power the concentration of power was in the hands of few that means there was power with the capitalists the workers were treated with unhealthy living conditions unhealthy um, uh, uh, the living areas and the vicinity and social inequality started to increase in the society also this was the time where movements started so there was a need to pass factory acts in order to save the rights of the factory workers so in 1830s and 1840s there was a movement which was known as chartist movement and this chartist movement said that there should be right to vote for the factory workers also with the rising inequality we have seen with the evils of capitalism there was a movement of socialism a movement a way for communism that started to take place because the rights of these people needs to be checked and this could be done only through checking the evils of capitalism so evils of capitalism could be checked through rising socialism and communism the next was the idea of laissez faire La laissez faire said that let us alone let us alone means the state should not interfere leave us alone no interference of the state should be done and this was the idea of laissez faire all nations came to accept the idea the state has a legitimate right and duty but state would not interfere state would not fall into the matters of the uh, industries and that was very very important so those were some of the major impacts which were witnessed by industrial revolution as we said industrial revolution was a major transition in the european history from middle ages to modern ages and again we saw a wave of imperialism which was witnessed post industrial revolution